Hello, let's go ahead and cover the last topic in paper one, which is a very glamorous one, all about software licenses. So to understand the purpose of a software license, we need to remember that the Copyright Designs and Patents Act gives software automatic copyright. And so because of this law, this copyright means people can't use or redistribute it without the creator's permission. In other words, the person who developed, the person who created this software owns the copyright. They can either give or decline permission for other people. And for other people to use it or redistribute it, that means to give it to somebody else, they need to get the creator's permission beforehand. And how is this permission given out? Well, it's given out via software licenses. All of us have seen these screens when we are installing software. We have, there's a long legal bit of text. We never ever read this, we just accept it and move on. But the thing we are accepting is the software license. So a software license is a legal document from a developer that sets out what permissions a user does and doesn't have with their software. So the purpose of this is to give permission to the users so they can use it legally, but it also gives the developer, the creator, some power to sanction people if they're not following this software license. So if you were a user breaking this license, you might get banned from the software. An example of that might be in a video game where if you're not allowed to mod online and someone mods online, your account might get disabled because of this. Another example could be a lawsuit in quite a serious case. This is when the creator maybe sues someone who's breaking their license and takes them to a civil court, or it could even be in a criminal court if it was a large scale issue where licenses were being breached, the police might get involved because of the Copyrights, Designs and Patents Act. So this is a very long document written by lawyers. What we need to know about is the fact that we can generally split licenses into two main categories. The first type is a proprietary license and the second type is an open source license. So proprietary software has a proprietary license. This type of license does not allow the user to freely redistribute or modify the software. So let's break that apart a little bit. So freely means for free. So if you were to modify or redistribute, you'd have to pay quite a lot of money probably to the developer. Redistribute, like I say, just means giving it to somebody else and modifying means changing the software. So this is a very restrictive license. You're not allowed to give it to anybody else. You're not allowed to change it. You are given it as it is. And an important fact and characteristic of this software is the source code will not be available for the user to view. Now the source code is whatever the developer has typed in their computer, in Python, in Java, in whatever, whatever was typed in to create the software is the source code. And for the vast majority of programs, you will never be able to see the source code because the vast majority of programs are proprietary. Now the user needs to run the program somehow. So without the source code, they need to have an executable file in order to run this. So this is just a file which you can double click and it will run. It's in binary, it's in machine code. And so if you opened it, you would just see complete gibberish, but you double clicking it, it would run and it would perform whatever the software is doing. But you can't see the source code, it's hidden from you. Just to drop in another term or characteristic OCR might use, often this is provided off the shelf, a slightly odd phrase, off the shelf. What that means is it's already available for sale. So it's sat there on a metaphorical shelf it's there available already, you just buy it, you don't customize it. In the same way that in Sainsbury's, there are loads of shelves of food, it's there for you to use, you can buy it, but you're not gonna modify the pasta on the shelf or the bread on the shelf. It's a product you use, you don't change, you don't give to anybody else. Slightly strange phrase, that one, but it contrasts with open source software, which you could customize. So this is really the opposite of proprietary. In open source software, the license does allow the user to freely redistribute or modify the software. And that means the source code is available to view. And consequently, the user is able to inspect this source code, they can look through it line by line, and equally they are allowed to change it if they would like to. Now that change wouldn't affect any other user, but they can change it for their own purposes. They're able to modify it for their own computer. And there aren't as many examples of open source software which are well known. There are lots and lots and lots of little examples of open source programs but only a few major ones you may have heard of. Android is probably the biggest one that you probably have heard of because of all the Android phones. Android is owned by Google, but it's open source. So I can just search and look through any of their code. And equally, I'm able to download this 
and modify it if I wanted to. That modification would only apply to my phone, but I could do it if I wanted to. To be honest, with open source software, it's rarely individual users wanting to modify it, but a big company may want to make some changes to it. So for instance, Samsung produce phones, Samsung are a rival of Google, but Samsung do still use Android. They just customize it a little bit. Likewise, Huawei, another competitor, use Android. They just tweak it a little bit for their own customized hardware and things like that. Now, this begs the question, why on earth would a software developer like Google provide their competitors open source software? It does seem a little bit crazy, but there are benefits and also drawbacks to this process. And that's often how questions are asked in terms of evaluation. So for a software developer choosing to put their source code online, what are the benefits? Well, because you're giving it out for free, you may get a wider audience. It's extremely hard to sell open source software. It's 99% of the time given out for free. You might ask for donations, but it's generally free. People like free stuff. You may well get a bigger audience because of it. Android is competing with iOS. You might want to give out for free to try and get more users. And maybe not relevant to Google, but for smaller open source projects, a lot of the draw for developers is a community may well form to help improve your code. So what happens is you might develop part of your idea. You might upload part of your idea online as open source, and you are hoping that some like-minded people get involved, maybe as a hobby, try and give improvements and try and adapt your code. And that might be because you haven't got the time or maybe the expertise to finish this project. You're relying on other people wanting to get involved to support. And lots of open source projects don't get looked at by anybody else, but there are lots of examples of smaller ones where a nice community have formed to contribute information. And a slightly bigger example of that could be something like Wikipedia, where one person hasn't got the time to write every article, but when people work together, they're able to make contributions. The key downside, however, is it's very, very hard, if not impossible, to make money from open source software because it's given out for free and anyone can use it and change it. And of course, the benefit of a community working together to improve it might not happen if there is low interest in your idea. And lastly, you've just got less control over your software. There's a definite greater risk of people breaching your copyright. So open source software is still copyrighted. You still need permission to use it. That's what the license is giving you. However, people are less likely to follow it because the code is just available online. They might not read your license, they may ignore it because they can just access the source code with little trouble at all. Now that's evaluating open source from one perspective of the software developer. What about the perspective of a user using open source software? Well, first of all, it's free. Therefore you haven't got to pay for it, which is a benefit. The key other benefit is you're able to adapt the software for your own specific needs. If it's missing a feature, you might add in that feature. Equally, if it's quite bulky and you don't need all of the features, you might just delete some of the code. It can be adapted to your needs. And thinking, especially if you are a big company or very paranoid about security, you are able to inspect the source code to look for things like security issues. Are there any bugs that you can see in the code? Are, is there any hidden malware somewhere in the code? It's all available to view, you can see it. Whereas proprietary software, you are kind of trusting that it's all, it's all okay. However, that security point can be a benefit in the case of you looking for these, but you might miss an important security issue, but an attacker might view it. So it's there are kind of two sides to this. Because the source code is available for anybody to see, that means an attacker can see it as well. And if they can see any bugs in the code, which could be exploited, they then know, oh great, I can now target anyone running this open source software. Whereas proprietary software, because the attacker can't see any of the code, they might not be aware of certain bugs which could exist, but are just hidden. And the last drawback for a user is because they're getting it for free, they can't really expect too much from a developer. There may not be any help if you get stuck or have issues and the updates may just stop being published because someone has stopped working on it. You can't really expect too much if you're not paying for it. So most software is proprietary. So what are the benefits and drawbacks to a software developer publishing proprietary software? Well, it gives you the option to sell it for a profit. Of course, a lot of software is free. And a lot of proprietary software is free. For example, Google Chrome is free. TikTok is free to use. Loads of software developers do publish proprietary software for free, but equally, you've got the choice to sell it for profit because people can't easily steal it. 
And if you've got loads of clever code running, like the TikTok algorithm, you don't really want your competitors to know what you've used. So keeping the source code hidden means nobody else is able to see what you're up to and can't steal your ideas. And especially if your code is not the greatest quality or you're concerned about bugs, there is less scrutiny of your code because nobody else can really see it. However, you and your company are pretty much on your own when it comes to the development. No other person is gonna to volunteer to help you out because it's proprietary, because it is locked down. And because it is often sold for profit, I mean, not always, but it often is, the audience may end up being a little bit smaller because of this. And finally, evaluating from the perspective of a user, well, a user using proprietary software may find the program is higher quality than an open source equivalent, perhaps because a company is investing in it. It's not just a few hobbyists working together. And especially if you are paying for it over time or it's a big company, there's often longer term support, things like documentation and articles and people you can speak to for customer service. And there also may be updates in the future as well. However, often you've got to pay for it or if you're not paying for it, there's usually some way they're making money, such as through advertisements. And you are ultimately trusting that it doesn't contain any issues. And ultimately, this is off-the-shelf software. It's available for you to use. There's no option to modify or customize it. So it's not adaptable. You get what you're paying for, and that's it. So that's it for paper one. If you've made it through these videos, amazing job. All the best in your exam. Keep working hard, and it will go really well.